Welcome to another session at Guru Vandal. I am your host, Gurvinder Singh. Namaste, Satchikal, good morning, Salaam. Welcome to another session with Guru Vandal. I'm your host, Gurvinder Singh. Today I wanted to talk to you about a very controversial and very important topic what is Hindutva and who is a Hindu? Uh, there's a lot of confusion and people, particularly politicians and miscreants are using and banding about all these terms uh, for political mileage and to ferment problems. Hindu is the name Persian invaders gave to the people of India. These are the people who lived beyond the river Sindhu, the Sanskrit name of the river we know as Indus. And this name stuck. Hindus are the people who inhabit this land. The British gave Bharat the name India. Even when Muslims travel to Saudi Arabia, the Arab countries and the Arab governments call all Indians, irrespective of their religion, uh, Hindu. The term Hindu is foreign, but we have come to live with it. Hindutva is not a religious term. It translates, Hindutva is not, an, uh, is not a religious term. It translates into Indianness, a term that represents the society of the people that inhabit this land of India. Hinduism is greatly misunderstood. There is no such religion as Hinduism. There's only Sanatana Dharma, meaning the eternal way, the way nature was, is, and will always be. This universal philosophy applies to life, independent of ideology, religion, or race. Sanatana Dharma is a spiritual and philosophical tradition and practice so abstract vast and complex having tens of thousands of years of learning uh, in it it really requires a true seeker and possess a purity of uh, thought and inquiry and a positive spirit to understand in a world dominated by blind faith understanding and appreciating Sanatana Dharma by Christians and Muslims is particularly difficult, if not impossible. An Indian can follow the teachings of the Muslim prophet Muhammad without being an Arab or a Turk and still remain a Hindu. An Indian can also follow the teachings of Christ without being a European or Middle Eastern and remain a Hindu. Well, what does being Hindu mean? Because India is such an open civilization, anything and everything is accepted. Now, here are some important aspects that will help us to appreciate who is a Hindu. You believe in God, you are an Aastic. You are accepted unconditionally. You don't believe in God, you too are accepted as a Gnostic, a non-believer. You want to worship idols? Please go ahead. You are a Murti Pujak. You don't want to worship idols? No problem. You can focus on Nir Guna Brahman, the formless one. You want to criticize something in religion? Please come forward. Let's discuss this logically and intellectually. Nyaya, Tarka, etc. Search for truth, justice, debate and discussions are core Hindu approaches. You are most welcome to accept beliefs as they are. 
There is no restriction. Go ahead with your search. If you don't like reading, immerse yourself in the bhakti tradition, love and devotion. You want to read and study? Sure, there are many texts. The Bhagavad Gita, the Upanishads, the Puranas, the Guru Granth, etc. There's so many things. Follow that way. You don't like the idea of bhakti? The path of love and devotion? No problem. Just perform good deeds. Become a karma yogi. Just forge your karma. You want to enjoy life? Very good. No problem. This is charvaka. It's a different philosophy. Focused on enjoyment. You want to abstain from all enjoyment. And find God through that path. Jai Ho! Be an ascetic, a sadhu, a person who lives in absolute simplicity, seeking to be one with nature. You don't like the concept of God. You believe in nature only. Welcome. Prakriti, as nature is called, is worthy of worship and respect. You believe in one God or supreme energy? Superb. Follow Advaita philosophy. You want a guru? Go ahead. Receive learning and gyan. You don't want a guru? Do dhyan. Help yourself. Meditate. Study. You believe in the female energy. Shakti is also worshipped. You believe that all beings are equally worthy of love and respect. Yes, you are awesome. Vasudeva Kutamakam. We are all children of this one earth. We are all one family. You don't have to celebrate a particular festival. There are numerous festivals. Celebration of life, celebration of the divine. Everything is possible. You are too busy. You don't have time for religion. That's all right. Because in Hinduism, there is no compulsions or there are no demands on you. You like to go to temples. Very good. Devotion at any time, at any place is all you need to connect to the divine. You don't like to go to the temples or any other place of worship. No problem. You will still remain a Hindu. Hinduism is a way of life way to achieve success, peace and happiness. You live life with considerable freedom. You believe that everything has God in it. So you worship your mother, father, the guru, trees, river, mountains, prani mitra, the earth, universe. You celebrate them and worship them all. Because every individual is viewpoint is worthy of respect. There is no problem if you don't believe that the Divine God exists in all things and all beings. Sarve jana sukhina bhavantu may all live in peace and contentment. It's a core thinking in Hinduism. All of us represent this. You are free to choose. Whatever we choose, we will still be accepted and respected by a true Hindu. This is exactly the essence of Hinduism, of all-inclusiveness. That is why it has, to be, it has withstood the test of time in spite of repeated onslaught, both from within and outside. And it has been able to assimilate the good aspects from everything. That is why it is eternal. Sanatana. So there is a saying in the Rig Veda, the first book ever known to mankind which defines the Hinduism philosophy. In a nutshell, it says, let knowledge come to us from every direction. In a sense, we are all Hindus. The problem 
with being a Hindu is there is simply too much freedom. There is simply too much choice. And modern man cannot accept such freedom. We do not know what to do with our freedom. And that is why we rush from freedom to captivity. We want to be captive. Well, that's the choice we all have to make, which is right for us, which is appropriate for us and the world. Well, enough for me for today. I hope you found this video useful and I look forward to seeing you on my channel again. In the meantime, please press the like button, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Have a great day.